Good evening, great dear friends and wonderful people. I uh, welcome you this evening once again. This is Radio Biafra Hello Motherland. And of course, it is constructive argument here on Radio Biafra. And of course, you all know why we are here this evening. And as you know me, I don't waste time. In us, in Ogologoku, Adigeno, Kambade. And you know the barrister who will be joining me. He is indeed a busy man. And I would not want to keep him long this evening. Therefore, we are going to commence in earnest. We have decided to bring Barista Ejio for this evening on air so that he can come and tell us what happened at Abuja High Court yesterday. Of course, it was a mockery of the judicial system, but this evening we are going to extra everything. And if time permits, of course, I am going to open the lines and take one or two calls so that we can make it a bit interactive. So if you have a question for the Barista this evening, I think you are welcome come to do so when I open the line. My name is Amazi K. Chuku Onoha. I hail from Omoa in all the province of Biafra land. And of course, this is constructive argument here on Radio Biafra. But before we continue, I would like to say one or two words of prayer before we go straight to what we have this evening. Father, we thank you. We bless you this evening. We have come once again, O oh Lord, to exalt your name. And Father, as we have come, we invite you to come and take control and take preeminence in whatever we are going to do. Father, we pray and we bless your name. We thank you for the life of our leader, Mazen Namdekano, and IPOB worldwide. Father, we say, continue to show yourself a mighty God that at the end of the day, victory will be guaranteed. Thank you, Father, for we prayed in the name of Chukwu Kikabiyama. He said, he said, he said. All right, without wasting time, I would like to go straight to the barrister and see if I have him on air. Of course, joining me this evening is our erudite barrister, Saifani Ejiofo. He is the IPOB lead counsel, and of course, he is the senior counsel to Onye Ndumazi Namdekano. Of course, they are doing exploits. As you already know, I don't need to tell you that. Barrister, I don't know if you can hear me, please. If you can, can you please indicate? I'm hearing you very clear, clear and loud. Thank awesome, you so awesome. Good evening, sir, and welcome to Constructive Argument with Mazi Kechuku on Radio Biafra. My barrister, the floor is yours. We want you to make sense, you know, of what happened in Abuja for us, of course, to the layman perspective that we will understand and be on the same page. And, of course, we will open the line if time permits so we can take a couple of calls from Biafrans who would like to ask one or two questions. Please, barrister, if you may. Thank you so much, uh, Mazi Ketchukun. Thank you very much. So there's one mind to be in your platform this evening. Thank you, Black Pound, for understanding this evening. It's my pleasure to be in this platform this evening. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me go back to the questions you asked. Before yesterday, when we are, uh, when we got no knowledge of the fact that uh, the federal government has filed a new charge against and then the Mazin Nandi can buy them five dollars ticket. I made it known to the world by the statement we should last Friday that nothing will happen in court on Monday. Because the pronouncement and the correction of court of appeal, the government, the government delivered on twenty on thirteen day of October two twenty two is clear and on the cover car. To the fact that when you do Mazin Nandi Kano and it's too easy from being defended, it's too easy from being charged to court, being prosecuted in any court in Nigeria. Even on the charge, even on, on the of the charge, being appealed again, against, or on any other charge, and court proceeded to suck out the seven count the next three charge. And consequently, the charge was going to be not the canon. So, on the basis of this sentence of the Court of Appeal, Expand that it cannot be prosecuted in any court again, it cannot be investigated, it cannot be tried in any court. So, we are actually waiting to see the magic that the federal government will perform yesterday. And they don't actually take it cause because we know that there no charge is mentioned in court. And as a matter of fact, no charge was mentioned. No charge was mentioned. They know there was a smart move on their part to file a press charge, which was filed. And we made effort to 
see if you can get a copy from them. Even from the court. Nobody gave us any, 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 any copy. I told them when we came to court yesterday to demand a copy of the charge, the fine. They said, no, we don't have any copy. I went to make sure the court to ask them for a copy. They said, no, that should go to my colleagues. So I said, ah, where has it, where, where has it become the practice that the prosecutor will find a charge and be holding it? But let's see what happened during the proceedings. Now, eventually, when the first charge was mentioned, the one that um, took us to court of appeal was mentioned and we reported it, the status of the case to the court, it was the judge should die. That means the court cannot talk about the matter again until when we are done with the Supreme Court. Then they don't mention that we charge. But that most not of the size and remote charge. They mentioned it. And we told the court that uh, there is a shield, a lot of shield, a little careful, she's my cousin called the same. Uh, probably he told the court that look, we never expected them to even mention a charge in the first place. But that will concern at least the court process in view of uh, the subsequent development of the common appeal. So which the court concord and say it's okay to the correct position of the law. And consequently, also adjourn that one so they die. And so, we also have a map against them. We find that, that was the third case on the left coast case. The fundamental right case that was fired on behalf of the end of the government. Challenging is illegal detention from 13th today of October 2, 22, when the man was delivered and private man was directed to release him uh, after being discharged and acquitted of this return here to return seven counters. So we filed an application before the prior court to challenge this illegal detention in the custody of SSS. So that's the matter came up yesterday. And the court also said, since, uh, and, uh, that this, since the matter is done before the Supreme Court, that it should, it will start to take the entire cases at the end, at the conclusion of the case before the Supreme Court. That, that was actually what happened yesterday, in summary. All right, that's beautiful. Um, Barrister, uh, so where do we go from here? Since Abuja High Court, because for me, this is a mockery of the judicial system. It's more like somebody who went to a magistrate court, you understand? And then, of mm -hmm. course, the matter was appealed, and it goes to a high court, and a high court rule in the favor of the appellant. And now, maybe the, the prosecutor decides, no, I'm going back to the magistrate again to question the ruling of the high court. Is that not madness? Can you please tell me how this uh, works? It's, it's a clear case of abuse of court process. That is what can be interpreted to be. That's, yeah, when, when it has to do with um, the second attempt, the second attempt to file a new charge. However, when the matter came up on, that was, that was that sometime June, June, of June, when it came up on June, of June, for when was delivered, we, we, that was one of the public court of appeal, and the entire against the government of the court of appeal, uh, the very seven contract. The court also decided to adjourn the matter to 14 days of November. That was yesterday. The report of sex from the matter before the court of appeal. So it was the thinking of the court then that it's possible that this matter that appeared the ground may not have been concluded before for them. But we'll come back to the court, the court to work in developing what the state of the case before the court of appeal. So actually, which ordinarily we intend sending the general to court this day, probably to that report become a lot and 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 then that is the issue of the general of the court of before the court. Uh, but when we discover that a game that they are playing, they are playing, they're playing a game, so we don't say, say no, what? We have to be in court. So, that we have to be game to so make sure that um, the game plays match one. So, and eventually we, we, we have to be a game and uh, we we'll have our way. So, so well, the last thing I want to let me just make this yes, go ahead, please. On the status of the matter before it's in court. You know, uh, when the men were delivered in this case, on October 2022, we watched it when the Supreme Court of Appeal took out the return council and contract then, the charge only the margin on the camera, and they constantly made some declarations which I've mentioned before now. So then, the federal government filed an appeal against that government of the Court of Appeal to the Supreme Court. Then I proceeded to carry an application for stay of the execution of that document. So we also cross appeal on some fundamental issues on the government government, the Supreme Court also. Then and also file an application, file a counter affidavit to the application for stay, which was argued and had on the merit. However, on the 28th of October 2022, 
We know about the application of the Nibad. Though it was had by a different panel of justices on the common appeal. Not some justices that had the main appeal. The, this panel, then, struggled by Justice Tanki, granted the application for stay of execution of the government of the common appeal, pending the commission of appeal before the Supreme Court. Now, because what it entails, that by granting that order for pay, now, the, the, it becomes, you know, you can no longer contest the fact that only the Muslim man can be held the illegally because the other, other direction that, direction that should be released has been stayed, not for the time, not for the aside. Let me clear. That order has not been validated, has not been set aside, has not been validified. It's just temporary speed. The other, by which of other members are being, which is, which is, I don't know, let me not comment about the legality of the words of that order. Because we're already going to so what we did was to all appeal against that order of state before the Supreme Court. And fortunately, appeal has been entered. This has been filed as a state you now. And we are aggressively claiming up, which I may not make permission, the matter, the matter which we are adopting. So we should adopt them. Play up on the date. And according, in accordance with the first five rules of the Supreme Court of Nigeria, that application, that appeal will be heard in line with the provisions of the fast track news of state court, and which in the state is in just hearing. Obviously, it is going to be given any more from now. And once that is done, I will communicate it. So let's assume, let's hope, or, or in the event, in the, in the, in the likely event, that that appeal was had and um, granted in October, that will be the end of the case. That will be the end of the name becoming detention in SSS facility, they will release him. It will not also still affect the appeal, the main appeal. The court will release him, then the court will direct him to the very court order. That was not what it means simply. So, um, that appeal has been entered. Then on the part of the time government that appeal against the government of the court appeal, as I speak to you, the time allowed them, under that tools, under the first part tools of the court of appeal, have been lost. And the best part of this, as I speak to you, even our court appeal, we are also we also found that this not the court appeal. The their their appeal against the government of court appeal has not signed a million to now. So we're not bothered about that actually. What what is what is what we are more interested in now as we speak to you is for just you to hear our appeal challenging the other. Because when that other is set aside, that will end. You don't can leave the appeal the next year or two and two down and back, you can hear you or call to hear it. It's not a problem with that. The one that I set aside, the only thing we need, as well. Well, what's, what we are more interested at, at this point in time are, are the, about the freedom. Once the steps see, the main appeal can be maybe can, can be adjourned to 2005 or 2005 or 2004. We wait. That's the one problem. All right, thank you very much. If you are listening, of course, it is constructive argument. And joining me this evening live is the erudite barrister. He's not just a barrister, he is also a sir of the order of the night. And he is Barrister Ifani, a geo for he is the IPOB lead counsel and of course the senior counsel to Onion Dumas and Nam Kano. And of course, if you want to join this conversation, you are welcome to call plus two seven seven four zero six seven eight four one two. I repeat plus two seven seven four Four zero six seven eight four one two, and that is the WhatsApp line you can call and put your question through to the barrister this evening. For the last time, plus two seven seven four zero six seven eight four one two, barrister. So I, I can see you are very confident, of course, that I if your appeal is granted, uh, that the uh, Mazinam the Colonel will be released. Now let me ask you, what if this government that we know refused to release him? Because they are known to be flaunting every known court orders. What will be your next line of action? The consequences will be very harsh. And I can't imagine, in my wildest imagination, that the third of them will disobey, will now get from school, second time disobey the other of the of, of, of state court. If I appeal, I feel it's considered on the merit and granted. I don't think so. I have I will find it very difficult to believe that it's a better problem. Ultimately, they're just come up with that. I find it very difficult that they do that. Very possibly. I don't think they will do that. 
All right. I remember that the federal government, of course, went to ask for the stay uh, of uh, the ruling of the appeal court so that they can go to uh, wherever. So are they still going to the Supreme Court, the federal government? Because I think the option is open for them to do so if they so wish to. Let me get, let me get my question. The, the federal government filed appeal against the judgment of the appeal. All right. The judgment of the appeal was the one delivered on the 13th of October, 2022. The judgment delivered on our appeal will file against the seven count that return against my Muslim and the government. And the government, the court decided on our hotel in. The court to send the federal government from detaining him again. The court to send any other court in Nigeria from prosecuting him or, being, or trying to find him or even investigating him. The court directed him to be released without further delay. So that was the substance of the judgment of the court of appeal. Now, the federal government filed an appeal against that judgment. They filed an appeal on the 17th day of October, 2020. That was the date they filed which is appeal and filed on us. Now, when they filed which is appeal, because which is appeal in law does not appear as a state of execution. So when they filed which is appeal, proceeded to also find, because when someone, when a which is appeal is filed, it's at that point in time that Zoom appeal has been passed, filed against the government, existing government. Then, and when they filed this of appeal, they also proceeded to file a motion to stay the other. They, they took the other and judgment of that court, the other court of appeal, which they appealed against the same court. That motion to stay was had from the state of October 2, 2022. That was it. The motion was had. Well, the motion was had on 22nd or I don't know if it was the meeting was delivered on 28th of October. 2022. Now, on that 28th day of October 2022, the court granted them a set of a, a new set of a new, a new set of final of this of appeal. Had this motion and granted them order to stay. So what I'm saying, and under under the Supreme Court fast track rules, when you file an appeal in a case of this nation, a case which is recognized under the rules to be had efficiently, you are expected to file your appellate brief. 10 days from the date of transit of record to the court. And as I speak to you, you should have 10 days, you will not find a day. The next of our concern, our concern now, which is more important, which is more important for us, is to ensure that our appeal against the other same institution of court of appeal is hard. Because when that appeal is hard, and possibly the government can enter in our favor, then that is the end of it. Because the government is entering in our favor today, and the court directs the federal government to bear the other men that couldn't appeal. They have no other option. You know, that reason I said that things as the other people that couldn't appeal for the Supreme Court. They have no other option than to obey the other men that couldn't appeal by leaving as in Africa. Which is more important to us. When you release, then we'll go on appeal, we'll go back to them on appeal and take them up and take, uh, and take it up from there. So what I'm trying to explain to you in a text is that the federal government filed its appeal against the government. Then, after filing the appeal against the government, they also filed a motion for stay, which was had by court and granted. Now, and after granting this motion for stay, records of the token appeal was transmitted to the Supreme Court, right? And since then, they've not filed the appellate bill. All after right. Appeal, yes, I get it. In principle, hmm. they, have, they, have, they, have, they have abandoned the appeal in principle. But they have appealed against that on the same execution of the event of the court appeal, which is more important. The one that is set aside, we need to release. That's all. And also, cross appeal on other fundamental issues that they raise during the during the hearing of the appeal. We we'll cross appeal on, on that too. All right. Hundred percent. Yes, Ma, uh, you are making I'm sense, saying. and of course, uh, I believe everybody yeah. is understanding. And the reason why I wanted you to expatiate more on that is, see, we are talking law here, and of course, for a layman to understand, we need to <laughs> re-emphasize and overemphasize. And of course, I thank you yeah. very much uh, for that, Mazi. Please go ahead if you still have anything to add on that issue. So what, what we are doing now in the test, we are final briefs. We are following up on date for the hearing. And also, date for hearing is in line with the provisions of the fast track rules of the 
records. So, which in the say provided for speedy, speedy, speedy hearing of that appeal. I mean, I appeal challenging the other. So, and I can assure you, God being on our side, we get to be given any more from now. And once that is done, we we'll communicate to the world and also to Mochilekin, in in particular. So, we are not renting, we are equal to the tax. And uh, yeah, no, we are being we are being well by God's grace. I believe God's uh, uh, absolutely, God has absolutely success. And God has been so wonderful to us and being there for us at every given point in time. You can see we have held them in the dark as we stand today because now they don't even our fight. What is our fight? This is people who have people who have who have returned now, who have tried and convicted of the government of social media. But today a court of competent division has decided them, has decided them, asked them to ask you to the child to live in. So as I speak to you today, there is no charge hanging on his neck today in Nigeria court. No charge was ever. No charge. You said three persons. We were like, yes, finish before the Supreme Court. We go the way. That's all. There's a three persons. There's no charge was ever standing on his neck now today. That was how I went from application. I was just trying to say before the Supreme Court. That on the authority of the Supreme Court of Appeal, on the Indian man, they can't against the Supreme Court of Appeal. But no, no court will try him, no court will prosecute him, no court will, no person will investigate him. You will have prohibited from detaining him. And it's very sound and clear. Very sound and clear. So, so we are hopeful that it's going to be communicated to us between now and the shortest possible time. That I can assure you, I can assure you, it's the shortest possible time. And I don't want to go, go further than this. Let me one friend, um, the process which we are put as well. So let me print and possibly those who want to know more. All, all right, Mazi, thank you very much. And of course, uh, mm -hmm. I believe that you are going to give Bia France a Christmas present, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean sure. by that, by sure. the grace sure. of Chukwu All right. If you you, make it happen, absolutely. Yeah. If you still want to call and ask your question, I'm not sure. Maybe the network is down because we are using WhatsApp. You can still try on plus 27740678412. I repeat, plus 27740678412 if the network allows. Mazi, after the uh, the ruling of the High Court, obviously you and your team went to see our leader Mazi Namdekano. Talk to me. How is he looking? And are there messages from him to Bia France? Please go ahead. He, he was in high spirit yesterday. And then um, uh, hearing about and seeing about being the one who believes about him, um, actually, what I what I said in front of you, in after I said yesterday. Of course, he, he, he never expects the, the contrary to happen. He was related to the brief and the progress of the government. And he passed a number of messages to me. And as a matter of fact, when he was passing this message, he specifically cautioned and asked her for something. Okay. He specifically requested that this should be converted in language and issues, which was being delivered. And that means that the link has been delivered to people who are concerned. And then um, he's actually calling for calm and the people to understand that the law is our side now, understand, understand the defects and the greed and the ethics of the fraud of the, of the, of the movement. So basically, for people to understand that this is a movement has left on for so many years to build. And movement has spent and sacrificed a lot to build. So we wouldn't want anybody to to destroy this movement, destroy this God again, God divine movement. So he's only cautioning and also urging Muchinake to be very circumstant of uh, uh, so many on the hands. And some of the number of some number of people, you know, you may think they are working with you, but are apparently working against you. And it's more so when we are in a critical time. Because once you are coming to an end of the process, you see confusion and possibly people who are being used by, by enemies of progress to distort the, the process. So you see them manifesting from different forms. Uh, so we are, they are being cautioned to be conscious of this character and also uh, probably place them where they belong and make sure they, don't, they never divide them. And also to be to be conscious of the principle. I've been teaching you, I've been teaching them before now, that I believe it's all about peaceful movement and ideology. So, in past 
time is similar to you. I'm promising, promising on the value that time, from time to time, we will be sending messages in that aspect to show that people understand that he is the one who is in detention. Understand that he is the one who is being 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 confined to the uh, uh, confinement, who is being subjected to all forms of emotional torture and psychological torture today. He's been there alone. Imagine when somebody is alone in a room, day in, day out, he's alone there, talking to his God. So the person needs to be prayed for. The person needs to be, 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 be respected. He needs to be respected. So these are some of the messages uh, we pass across with the day. All right. And thankfully, other people are there to witness the messages. Yes, I don't think when they're alone, other people are there to witness it. All right. Other people are apparently, uh, you are, you are, we're familiar with. All right. Ma Mazi, I will still come back to that uh, with that in mind. Let's go to the line and see if we can take this call. Caller on the line, can you hear me? Caller on WhatsApp. Oh, hey, Biafra. Mazi, please, your names, and you go straight to your question because of time. Thank you very much. Mazi, my name is Mazi. I'm calling from France. All right. My question is, my question is, in Nigerian law, is it uh, separate from international law based on when in the come to issue of rendition uh, from, from, uh, from outside Nigeria? Did, did, did the law accepted to uh, to do the rendition uh, uh, in the case of our leader? All right. The first one. Okay. The second one. The second one. In Nigerian law, did they give the the uh, did the uh, Nigerian Bar Association, did they allow the, uh, like, someone like Atan or Atan or uh, Malami to misbehave or disobey their, 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 their law without any charges or without any penalty? All right. I, I get your question. All right, Mazi. Thank you very much. I'll put your question through to the barrister. Thank you very much. There we all right, Barrister, I don't know if you get the question. The first one is bothering... No, I didn't, I didn't hear All right, he's asking, does Nigeria obey international law, especially in the case of extraordinary rendition? That is number one question. Number two, he's asking in terms of the code of ethics of the Nigerian Bar Association. Is Malami above the code of ethics? Why don't the Bar Association call him to order? Please go ahead. Um, let me get to the issue. Nigeria operates a system that has no respect for the law. law. We operate a system whereby people who are supposed to be in a position to advise them are people who are, are kind of, um, they are more or less like, um, uh, not only incompetent, but the they, they are media cash, kind of. So, it was, um, the bedrock of every society is respect for the law and social justice. But I can assure you, that I can say, when they look at your children, children have no respect for the law, law, they take love into their hands. So, but they, very for now, the aspect of international community involvement or ruling of decisions is very impactful because there are several ways of getting it implemented. So it was when the government, like in the present case now, the United Nations Working Group on Arbitral Detention uh, delivered uh, a reading, a communication to the Nigerian government requesting and part of the that part of submissions made in this in that communication, I participated in supplying materials that were used in that communication. Evidence is fair. So uh, so, I mean, my terms are used in that, um, probably in that position before the United Nations uh, Working Group on the Traffic of uh, Attention. So, the, at the end of the day, made a communication to the Nigerian government, requesting them to release Marvin Land to conditionally, and also made some parishing pronouncements that have to do with the parishion payable on account of the law violation of the right. So, this order or ruling communication was not obeyed. We were given six months needed to comply. So now I'm in the event, in the in the likely event, or likely event that 
to disobey, complete to disobey this ruling or communication for you. There are excellent procedures you wish to get them, compare them, compare the evidence to a compare compliance, which was spelled out under the, under the, under the procedure. So then two, then two, um, thankfully, thankfully on the 13th of October 2022, the Court of Appeal also delivered a landmark judgment, wherein they declared the manner in which Union B was abducted. It was kind of really the word abducted, abducted in Kenya, and a former addition to Nigeria, as illegal. I mean, it is a violation of extant international laws and conventions which Nigeria is a state of. So, by virtue of this declaration, it was, I believe some relevant these foreign government and institutions are waiting for pronouncement from Nigeria court. And this pronouncement, this pronouncement has come handy from a very reputable intermediate court, not even high court. So, now, we are before the Supreme Court. But the most important thing, as it starts, the fact is that Inland Bikano has been discussed and acquitted of all kinds against him. And the manner in which he was abducted and possibly rendered to Nigeria has also been declared illegal and gross violation of international laws, extant international laws, both in the convention, many of them, and also international act of 2015. We have a number of laws on African African women and people's rights, which Nigerian government violated in his in kidnapping and Mazin and Bikano and 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 the tribunal in Chef Nigeria. So what is found there? Is that we protect the government of the world, we're still caught. We also have the communication from 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 United Nations uh, working group and that communication or the third version, they don't respond to it, they don't comply with it. So probably we are talking about code of ethics by by uh, which is some uh, Nigeria Bar Association. I call applicable to left, Nigeria, my session, the two advocates as the Malamalani. I I made this step, I made a an introduction, a very much logic part of this in this topic. I talk about the manner in which the system is skewed to favor a certain person, to certain small certain person. The Malamin will give respect to him and to just take. These are people that live above the law. These are people that you cannot touch. Then as I've discussed this subject before in one of my interviews. Nigerian Bar Association, as far as I'm concerned, they are two players in the as far as I'm concerned. I live by self for instance. 2010, between 2008 and 2019, my house was invaded. Over 10 houses we are bought, people were killed. This person said, I don't mind the way you were not involved. A for that matter, she didn't for that matter. Last year, June 2nd, my, my house was also invaded. My PA was killed right in my house, bombed, and my wife was and my friend of my domestic child were abducted in the process. I wrote to MDA, what have they done? So it's, 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 a, it's a messed up system, that I can assure you. We are struggling to see, it's not easy here doing this, what you are doing today, it's not easy. Not everybody can do it, the way we are doing it. It's just believing in God and God, it's a, it's a mission God event for us to have a peaceful country. Otherwise, we their life today to become the police. Because it's a system that has no respect for human rights. It's a system that has no respect for rule of law. It's a system that has no respect for certain persons for certain reasons. So these are what you are facing today. But that's why we are trying to have her high level. Trying to go through talks to ensure that international community is involved. And we are hopeful that there will be a change in reality in the course of time. And because I believe the international community and foreign government are sh gradually showing its place. In what is happening in Nigeria. And these are the manner in which cost orders are being distributed, distributed, and being plotted with humanity and uh, uh, with impunity. And uh, so uh, that's only NAD uh, available to us in the circumstances. But we don't expect anything much from them. Uh, so, and of course, only the Nigerian community is concerned. It's a global case, which I believe virtually all foreign governments are involved, are interested in the case. So, and the world is monitoring. The world is watching to know how we are going about it. And we, that's why we kept, kept on objecting the world, kept on writing them at every stage of the proceeding, at every stage of the, of the proceeding court, or to inform them what is happening. So they are following up. I can assure you they are following up on what you are doing. And I believe in the fullness of time, 
than was doing it was any present. Thank you. Thank you very much, Barrister. Of course, I know Barrister is a busy man, but before we let him go, let's see if you can take one or two more calls and then we will let the Barrister go. Caller on WhatsApp, can you hear me? Second caller, can you hear me? Please, yes. your names. Yes, yes. Thank, thank you very much. Yes, good evening. Good evening, Biafrans, friends of Biafrans, even enemies of Biafra. <laughs> we greet all of you. Mazi Kechkona. No. Thank you for the good job that you are doing. I also want to, to appreciate our uh, Ebu Barista, not only him and his team, our legal team, they are doing a great job. I'm saying kudos to all of them. May Elohim continue to strengthen them. The question you asked, if you can remember the day you were analyzing uh, what was the appeal court's ruling, where the day you were analyzing it, uh, telling Malami what uh, he should have known as uh, the attorney of uh, the, that uh, contraption. I wrote something on the comment section. I'm saying uh, comparing the zoo with the uh, South African uh, judicial system <laughs> is not doesn't work uh, because all, these all right. people Mazi, they are Mazi, different. Mazi, sorry not to interrupt you. If you can go straight to that question, so you know, Barista is a busy man. He will be leaving soon. Go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, actually, it's not a question. I want to encourage our barista oh, all right. and uh, all our legal teams. All right. Uh, I want to encourage them for them to keep on doing the good job they are doing. It's somehow embarrassing. The court will give its verdict and the zoo will be doing a different thing. You know, it somehow demoralizes one. But they should keep on with that spirit. The Afra IPOB, we are with them. Elohim Chukwokikadema is with us. And we know zoo should uh, cover, I mean, they should, they should, when it comes to the case of our leader and the IPOB, by now they should have covered themselves with shame. The court will say a different thing and they'll be doing a different thing. But all, right. all we are saying, we know, in the end, victory is ours. Absolutely. It is this Biafra referendum, we must get our referendum. We must get our Biafra. We must be free from these uh, animals. Mazi, may Elohim continue to strengthen all your efforts. Thoughts. Thank you now very much. and always. You say. You say. You say. All right, Barrister. He is just acknowledging and, of course, encouraging you and the, your team for the good work you are doing. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. All, all, all right, Barrister. I want to say something. You know. Uh, the reason why I decided to study law here in South Africa, and by God's grace, I just finished my final year. Um, Barrister, you know, here in South Africa, <laughs> here in South Africa, a, a lawyer of 25 years old, the way he is respected, I'm talking a 25 year old lawyer, even the president cannot talk to that lawyer anyhow. And then when you look at the zoo called Nigeria, the way things are happening, I think you guys are strong. <laughs> to be honest with you, to be a lawyer in Nigeria is the most difficult thing on the planet Earth. Please go ahead. My brother, we are, we are, a, we are a civilized society that respects and values the rules of law. And you can see, you can see how things move here. Over the last year, the former president of South Africa was, uh, was arrested and tried and eventually convicted. For fraud related matters, essentially. In black men's country, a former president of the country. And sent to jail. Here, no? And sent to jail, eh? Yeah, and sent to jail. So you can't try such such thing here. You can't try such thing. Because uh, the system, as I've said, I've said it, I've said it before now, that here the system is skewed towards favoring certain persons. It's an elitist system, kind of, that favors certain group of persons. So, and discriminate against certain persons. So this is what's the It's a very strong and uh, formidable system. But one who is going to be a cool going to operate under that system must also be strong and fearless and formidable. Because uh, laws here yeah, um, are dynamic. Here yeah, I see law being dynamic. Someone Mr. A will come and interpret uh, a certain aspect of law in a manner that will serve the interest. Then Mr. B will interpret it according to law. It's not in school in court of appeal, but a government, a unanimous government of court of appeal, delivered by able to find a final version of court of appeal, was stayed. And it is worse still, where there's no enabling laws, extant of judicial authority that supports staying under prosecution in a criminal matter. In criminal matters, it doesn't be hard up. 
scared of the picture of somebody's position of like activity. Like, in fact, I don't want to go into the merits of the other of the on the issue because uh, argue, I don't want to argue my case again. There's only before the Supreme Court. So a lot goes on here, and it's only the fact someone who is strong in fact, strong in spirit, who also knows God to defend and be and be fighting. You have to function of uh, you have to have to function of being close to your God. Uh, if you are not close to God, forget it. You are gone. And so, and, and God has been so merciful to us. I must tell you, I must, I must confess that. And I've been so grateful to God for all that He's been for us. That's to sustain us in this fight, in this fight. To sustain us against all enemies for attack and plan. And I, I don't know, at that point, I will go to God, I will go to church and be asking God, why do you love me so, so much? Why do you love me? The people of God, my brother, I tell you today, people have been, you say, just that time, you say, your father was involved in this case from 2015. You know, 2015, you got involved in this case. After 2015, some people are still saying, I don't even know what that deal is all about. And you can come back, after 2015, some people don't even understand what IPOD is all about. They've been in this case since 2015. Today. And we are so, we are so strong, tall, and standing firm, upright, transparent, and incorruptible. That's the most important thing. We may be unshaken in our belief, in our understanding of the law, in our application of the law, in defense of IPOD and marginal becoming. I said it in the summer. Me, if I'm a Jopa, my chamber, and my group, and my, and my lawyer, my lawyer has been finished Since 2016, 2016 TV, I cannot count the numbers. The number of members of the IPOD who have been able to handle the matters and will release unconditionally. They are in their thousands. Of course, they are there. Of course, they are there. So uh, it's not by the mind, it's by the teaching grace of God. Uh, I'm not missing about it because it's the grace God gives us. So um, we cannot say no to us. I will continue to do our best to ensure that the right thing is done. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, thank you. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm available at any point in time you want me to talk yes. to you. So we are available. Though I have a time schedule, but I'll just give you some notice. I will talk to you. I will talk to you. Mazi, before, before. Them. Before you go, before you go, I have just two things quickly I need to run by you. Now, you know that law is about precedence. It's about setting a precedence. Now, when you set a precedence in law, the next generation will refer even to that case and say, Nam the, the state versus Nam the Kano. This is what was the outcome. And that precedence can be used, of course, to judge a, a case in the present world. Now, I want to let you know that what you guys are doing is you are changing the course of Nigeria legal frameworks. And to be honest with you, at the end of the day, people will be referring to this case, State versus Namdekano, 2022, yeah, yeah. 2015. Yeah. And it will be a precedence. Because to be honest yeah. with you, people until now, nobody believed that you can go to the devil's house <laughs> and take yeah. out anything from there. But that's what you people are showing yeah. the whole world, that you can still get justice from that zoo called Nigeria. Come what may. Yeah. And it's happening right before our own eyes. Yeah. And to be honest with yeah. you, yeah. it can only be Elohim. And I really want to sure, say, sure. you guys are doing so extremely much. well. Now, before I get your final shot, I want to say this, Barista. There is what we call a legal practitioner and client confidentiality. Now, what am I trying to say? Mazen Namdekano is incarcerated. The only voice that he has now is his legal representation. That's what people don't understand. Yeah, yeah. And I want them to understand yeah, yeah. that. Mazen Namdekano cannot yeah, yeah. speak through anybody except his legal yeah. representative. That is how it works, because he is presumed to be in, a, a, you know, in communicado, and it's only his legal representatives sure. can speak to him. Why am I saying this? Whenever you go to see your client, and he tells you something, or gives you a message to pass on, Mazi, when you pass that message, you don't do it apologetically. You pass it direct, because it is legal. It is ethics Thank because you. one thing is sure you. you can never lie a man against a man who is alive by and by he okay. will come out okay. and of course there will be references okay. to say your lawyer said this said that said that and then he will own up and say yes i asked him to or i didn't ask him to that's why i get confused and upset when people begin to question a legal practitioner when he is representing or speaking 
what his client asked him to say. Mazi, can Mas, I get you a final I'll, show? I'll interrupt you. Yes, I'll go interrupt ahead. you before you forget. Yes, go ahead. It's it actually my wish to say this thing over the Ethereum platform. It's something I've been keeping to myself. Uh, and also, giving me a magnum number. And good times, you know, I'm saying this thing with every kind of seriousness and sincerity. You know, certain things that happen. Only in the just looking at me. He was just looking at me. Are you sure your service is actually situation? You know, ask certain ask, ask questions. Is this the day they realize that they're talking to my lawyer? That's a, they realize that this person is my lawyer. And I will communicate to them through the good time. So let me just stop here. But in fact, what has been giving me the, the encouragement? I don't give attention to the fraction. Believe me, I can say that. I, can, I, can, I will say that now to my kingdom come. I'm a very busy lawyer. Very, very busy lawyer. And I have a lot on my hand. My own obligation today, my own obligation, legal obligation, and moral obligation to any man and can. I discuss with him as not only a client as a brother. And any time he passes a message across to you to portray me, I will not fail uh, his respect in doing that. It's a portion of time. Let me say this to you. It's a portion of time. Yeah. It's a portion of time. Those who are praying, thinking that you will not come out, that they are, that they are daydreaming. Those who are trying to destroy what you have built, they are daydreaming. Because they will be shocked. Sure. And it will happen soon. It's a portion of time. I, I did laugh. Right? But I know what's about to happen. I know what's about to happen. Let me just stop at this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mazi. They were, and we really appreciate you coming up again, even okay. on a short notice, to speak to Biafra. It's because we believe that this is Radio Biafra, and of course, on this platform is where we worship Elohim. On this platform is where we speak to Omo Chineke around the world. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it, Ndewo. Thank you. I think God bless you. And bless you, you too. You have a wonderful evening. Your part, I go to all. Thank you for your prayers, our support, and solidarity. We appreciate you. We are deeply grateful, profoundly grateful to you all. Continue to pray for us. Continue to pray for any of the Muslim men in Canada. Continue to pray for what you are doing. And your prayers have been impacting. Because it has been victory all over the places. Victory in Abuja, victory in Omaha, victory in all over the places. Victory in Kenya, victory in the UK. So, and it shall end in victory. Ultimately, it will happen soon. And any of the Muslim men will be free. And bless you too. Thank you very much. And that was the voice of the erudite barrister, Barrister Ifani Ejia For He is, of course, um, uh, IPOB lead counsel and, of course, a senior counsel to Onyendu Mazi and Nam Dekano. And coming up this evening, and, of course, to speak to Bia France worldwide. And you have heard it from the horse's mouth. And, of course, it is our duty, it is our responsibility to bring you up to date now and then so that you can be in the know what is happening or what is transpiring as far as our leaders legal issue is concerned now one thing i know and i must tell you this is this there is something we call you know a confidentiality between a legal counsel and he is his client and trust me well for my own sake and what I've learned in law school is that when a lawyer says he cli his client said, of course, you need to agree. You need to believe as far as that client is still alive because you know by and by at the end of the day, the truth will always prevail. The truth will always come out. It's, it's, it's just the way it is. It is a legal norm which you cannot change by your doubts or by your own belief because at the end of the day, legality allows it to be so and of course this evening we have spoken the truth we have spoken the word the way we should because it is constructive argument and of course we say bring your argument so that we can make sense of that argument and of course we are going to leave it here i want to thank you dear friends all around the world as we await our christmas present what is our Christmas present? The release of our leader, Mazen Namdekano. We are hopeful that he is going to rejoin us, that he 
is going to spend this Christmas with his family, an IPOB family worldwide. This is our dream. This is our prayer. And it will come to pass, I tell you. And of course, Elohim, he is our God. He is listening to our prayers. And of course, this is where we are going to visit this evening. From me and from here, it is goodbye. May God bless Biafra. May God bless our little man's in Lambda Kano. And I will speak to you again soon. Good night and God bless.